Okay guys, partly by request and partly by circumstance today, I'm going to be showing you guys my minimalist kit, what I really carry for the winter. And it does change up a little bit, but that is what we're going to be covering today and looking at the changes from my summer, what I really carry, to what my winter, what I really carry. And without any further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so let's go over some of the stuff that hasn't changed too much. Of course, we're still running a really sturdy, really strong bush knife. Now, once again, I'm a very large fan of, or proponent of, the Baldrick rig. So this stays on a Baldrick rig sheath, as you guys. So this stays on a really nice Baldrick rig, and that's how I have the sheath set up. So that's how it stays. But it's still a really sturdy, essentially belt knife for doing general purpose tasks. So that's the first part of what really hasn't changed. The next part that hasn't changed too much is the fact that I'm carrying a saw. So this is a Baco Laplander, just like last time. It's really convenient, really easy for me to just throw this in a pocket. And of course, the amount of work that this thing can go to town on and do is very nice. Okay, and the next part is my Maxpedition Janus pocket extension, or this serves as my personal survival kit. And you guys can see it does not have the water filter on the bottom, and that's the largest change I make to it in the winter, because of course, if you carry any type of water filter that you've used that has water in it, um, it getting freezing or being exposed, it freezing or getting exposed to freezing temperatures will cause it to be damaged. So for the most part, this stays pretty much the same just minus the water filter now i still do have water tablets in here so it's not like i don't have a water purification method it's just that it's changed for the winter and for the cold season so that is the largest change to the psk but of course the psk is still being ran okay next to that is the handgun and this one is a little bit of an unfortunate thing. This is a CZ P10C, and there's a couple reasons why I'm running a 9mm instead of the 44 Magnum. The first reason, and the most important reason, is the fact that the 44 is currently down for the count. It had some front, or sorry, rear sight issues, and it's no longer in service for those reasons, but it is being repaired. So the 44 will be back next spring. So. For the winter, the P10C is the carry, and I'm not overly concerned because a lot of people will be like, you know, what about bears? What do you do for bears? And while sadly you guys don't really see a lot of snow here, winter is in full force here in Alaska, as per usual, early, earlier than most states. So all the bears have really gone into hibernation, so it's not particularly important to have a gun that you can defend yourself against bears because there aren't really any bears anymore all running around in fact of the past few outings that are of the past month when i've been going out for outings i've seen more wolves than i have bears and i would rather have something like this for wolves because when you fight wolves or if wolves decide to attack you you are going to be dealing with multiple of them it's not going to be a singular kind of thing you're going to have multiple wolves to deal with and also wolves are not as heavily armored in bone structures of bear so they're not as hard to take down so something like the cz p10c with a nice strong load something such as these Underwood ammo or Lehigh Defense Extreme Penetrator rounds built on a Lehigh def or Underwood ammo plus P charge seem to do the trick pretty well for at least for my confidence level in them is pretty high. So I'm not overly concerned and then I do have a backup mag for the gun in case I need an extra 15 rounds. So that is the current firearm. Like I said, it's not my most favored firearm for the woods, but it works well and it's what I have right now. And like I said, the 44 is currently down for the count. So I don't really have much of an option in the way of firearms that aren't nine mil. Okay, so getting down to the next part of this kit or my minimalist kit for the winter is a hatchet. I like to have something small like a hatchet or I like to have something small like a hatchet but that can do a lot of the work of an axe because as I've mentioned in other videos, in the winter time, the highest emphasis has to be put on when we're talking about um, hatchets and different tools like hatchets. So in the winter, the reason why I like having a hatchet is because it allows me to do a lot of tasks that aren't super fine, but 
need to be done very efficiently. And that is kind of the name of the game when you're out bushcrafting in the winter, is not worrying about fine skills such as carving, but larger skills such as shelter building and fire building. And something like a hatchet will allow you to get wood large enough and suitable enough for shelters. It will also allow you, with relative ease, to obtain good solid firewood, even if it has to be later broken down by a camp knife. So I like having a hatchet, and once again, it's very easy, very portable to just throw on the body, kind of forget about it, and have it when I need it. So the last additional little bit of kit that I like to carry is a good little fire kit. This is just a small traditional kind of fire kit, little leather pouch, and if you guys have been around the channel, I'm sure you guys watched me make this little thing, but I just filled it with a whole bunch of traditional fire starting materials, and I have all of those in this really easy to use and easy to uh, grab container, and I just keep this on my body for starting fires, because once again, the name of the game, Bushcraft, when it begins to be winter, is less and less about fine uh, skills and crafts, and becomes more about firecraft and shelter craft. So having something that allows you to start fires very easily, and you don't have to search around or look around for the natural materials in the woods, you can just grab your fire kit, you know, pull out what you need and start the fire. That is really critical and very nice to have, especially on colder days. Okay guys, hopefully you enjoyed this quick look at my minimalist kit. There's not a whole lot to it because once again, the entire point of it is to be minimal and to not weigh me down and not really prevent me from traversing the woods and the woodlands how I need to. So this is a good multi-purpose kit that I use, or setup that I use, whether I'm hunting, bushcrafting, practicing survival. This is basically my standardized setup for all of those because it allows me to do any one of those tasks very well and having the right tools to do those jobs. So anyways guys, hopefully this helps you with your winter kit. Winter bushcrafting is certainly fun in a, its own ways. It's different than summer bushcrafting. So I would definitely recommend trying it out, but make sure you're prepared because you don't want to be stuck out here alone in a survival situation when it's real cold and not be properly prepared. Anyways guys, that is all for now. God bless and I'm out.